Man, I might spend, but I'm not breaking. I know who's on my side. And every day I'm sinking at that solid rock I came in. I might spend, but I'm not Amen, amen. Bless God. Bless God. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Welcome to Life in Christ in the National Church. We honor God as the Lord graces us to be here in this month of Thanksgiving. Here at the church, the Lord has graced us to be intentional about getting in the word of God and learning and gleaning as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about Thanksgiving. Um, and in in even as, as we prepare, we sit in this month of Thanksgiving, I got some absolutely amazing news yesterday. One of the families that I befriended um, as an Uber driver going through, uh, I'm going to say a supernaturally hard time. And, and I was able to befriend them and invite them to um, our youth back to school. And I got word yesterday from that displaced family that the whole entire family was baptized. And 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 we we here at this church, the whole purpose of, of us being who we are is for us reaching lost souls one life at a time for Christ. It doesn't take much to reach, to smile, to hug, or to let some someone know that you care. And and for us to get that divine report yesterday that God has a new family of faith, that God has young people who have walked into divine purpose. And what's so exciting is that I believe that, that the most important day of your life here on earth is when you give your life to Christ, is when you say yes to Jesus. And yesterday we have five witnesses that have said yes to Jesus and we honor God and bless God for them. God continues to get all the glory, honor, and praise. So with that, let us go into our Sunday school time in and with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We know that our saving and our sanctification comes from you alone. We thank you, Father, for that divine report. We thank you, Father, for you being witness of who you are, for you being witness of your glory. We ask, oh God, as we close out our 2024, 2023, and we go into our 2024, you continue to lead, guide, and direct in all things. Father, this morning, as we take time during our Sunday school, may your anointing rest upon our lesson. May your anointing rest upon us reading your word this morning. Continue to help us, continue to, to keep us, oh great God, continue to go before us and all these things we bring before you now in Jesus' name. And so we go into this morning, our lesson. And the title of our lesson this morning is Freedom to Love. Our devotional scripture for this lesson was in Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. And and the background scripture, uh, a portion of where we'll be reading from this morning, is coming from, we're, we're going to be in um, three books this morning. It's coming from the book of Romans, chapter 1, excuse me, the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. And then it's going to be, we're going to skip over it into the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. This is, and, and we know that um, the whole purpose of our Sunday school time in this fall quarter was for our, our Sunday school resource to help us glean and learn about God's law is love. And so here in our Sunday school time, what, what, what a 
perfect lesson for us to be in this morning. What a perfect lesson for us to be able to glean from this morning. This morning, the Lord is teaching us about freedom to love. But, but, and, and our Sunday school is going to teach us, but, but who paid the ultimate sacrifice for love? It was Christ Jesus. We know the story. We hear the song. It was his love that, that held him to a cross. For our sins, he was innocent. He was sinless. And so when we talk about freedom to love, that freedom to love, that love came with a divine course, cost. And that divine cost allow us to walk in the love of God freely. This is the lesson this morning. In, in, in seminary, they teach us about agape love. They teach us about brotherly love. And, and, and it's important that we're healthy. It's important that we're divinely healthy and understanding the very nature and essence of the love of God. That's why God had us sitting in this place with him during this fall quarter so that we would be divinely healthy in God, divinely healthy in the things of God. We're not buying the ticket that the world sells that sends us straight to hell about love. That's why we have to teach our young people. The word of God calls us to train them up so that the world won't devour them and consume them with their evil and wicked ways. That love, the love that our Sunday school lesson this morning is teaching us about, and we're going to read it in just a second. It came with a cost. It came with nails pierced in Jesus' hands. It came with a spear pierced in a sign that caused blood and water to spew out. It came with nails in his feet and a thorn, or a crown of thorns on his head and stripes, 39 stripes on his back. <laughs> So when we think about freedom to love, we, we think about the ultimate cost of love is, is the price that Christ Jesus paid on the cross for our sins to wash us in his blood, to cover us in his blood, to cancel the assignment of the enemy in every circumstance, in every situation, in every way. So let us get into our Sunday school lesson. We have our, our devotional reading that, that and, and I want to share this this morning before we go into our lesson. The devotional reading prepares our heart for what our Sunday school lesson will teach us. And then we read our background scripture. The background scripture is the foundation that, that helps us understand in context our lesson, Freedom to Love. And so, you know, I say it every Sunday. If you ha haven't read it already, I do encourage that you go back and read your devotional scripture and that you go back and you read your background scripture in its entirety. Our Sunday school lesson won't cover all of the verses. Um, we'll just hit on um, our two lesson outlines that we have this morning. The first lesson outline is love and the law. We're going to read that in Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. And then our second lesson outline is love and spiritual gifts. We're going to read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. Our key text, and we're going to read that in just a second, is Romans chapter 13, verse um, verse 9. And, and um, we'll recap, we'll hit the highlights of our two lesson outlines that we'll go over this morning. We'll share our church announcements, and then we'll close. And that's what our Sunday school lesson consists of this morning. And so, um, our key text, Romans 13, verse 9, I want you... To, to turn in your Bibles, I always encourage that we read the Word of God. I always encourage that we read the Word of God. This is what I'll say about that and why this that's so important. You may not think that you're reading of the Word, or you may not feel, you know, you may not feel that the reading of your Word is, is making a difference. But because you put your eyes to the letter, your spirit is 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 
getting nourished from, from what you read. And then later on, the work, which is active and alive and operating on our behalf, will reveal itself, will manifest itself. And that's how good God is. And so our key text, foundation of our lesson this morning is Romans chapter 13, verse 9. In the King James Bible, it says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I could do a whole different sermon on this altogether, but this is this is where we're this is where we're gonna sit at this morning before we go into our first lesson outline. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The spirit of bitterment would say, <laughs> people are so busy, worried about what the other person has, they're too jealous, too envious, too hateful to be able to love their neighbor as thyself. Or they're too busy hoarding what they have. Here's, here, here's a key. That, that that I've grown to experience and learn is the, the, the word of compassion. And that word, as, as the Lord uh, matures me in, in my walk of faith, has allowed me to recognize that it is just the grace of God. You don't know what that person has suffered you don't know what that person is suffering, but but you 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 just see what I call the dandelions of what life has done to them. I was um sharing with the international pastors. There was I was coming out of the grocery store and there was a man who was seemingly uh, mentally challenged, and he was begging. And 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 I was telling the international pastors um, through WhatsApp that. In that instance, as I'm coming out the grocery store, um, I was at Publix, I was leaving Publix. As I'm coming out, out of the grocery store, I saw this man and he asked me for arms. And and instantly there was compassion. Like instantly it was the Lord reminded me that my story, my circumstance, my situation could be so very different. And a lot of times we complain that we can't get the red bottom shoes that we want or we can't buy the Range Rover that we want or the Rolex that we want. Here this man is begging. <laughs> and and, and the, the faculties of his mind is, is challenged. And, and sometimes we get it wrong, but the Lord was graced me to give him a couple of dollars, but it wasn't me blessing the man that was the man actually blessing me to help me see just how divinely good God is and how God has been my keeper all life long. And I pray the same for you. And so this morning, our key text sets the foundation for our Sunday school lesson, freedom to love. And, and it says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. It doesn't matter, uh, 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 what they look like, how they're shaped, what what language they speak. We have a charge. If we call ourselves Christians, if we are to be Christ-like, if we are to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, God charges us to love thy neighbor as a self. I'm not saying let your neighbor run all over you and mistreat you and all. No, that's not what I'm talking about. And so this morning, we get a rich lesson on the freedom to love. Now, now here's the thing I'm going to share before we go into our first lesson outline, because I want us to, to understand this. When we think about freedom, that means that <laughs> we, we get to do whatever we want. No, that's not freedom. That's chaos. What I'm talking about is God's holiness, God's righteousness, God's purity, and the freedom of being obedient. We know that God
God is love. God is not going to force you to love your neighbor. So when you think about that word freedom, it doesn't just mean you freely love. That means you have the freedom to choose to love thy neighbor, the freedom to choose to obey God. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Just because God said it, that don't mean that you will do it. But the freedom to be obedient to love thy neighbor. And so that's the grace that the Lord gives us this morning. And <laughs> this is what I'll say. Um, we'll, uh, and, and we'll go into our two lesson outlines. I have a neighbor and um, she's living with her, her daughter, her granddaughter, a Spanish family. She's living with her daughter, her granddaughter and, and, and her, her daughter's husband. And um, she stays home, the, the grandmother stays home and she takes care of the grandbaby. The grandbaby is absolutely adorable. And every time I walk out the door, they greet me or I have a little puppy. So they'll greet my little puppy and stuff. And, and when they first moved in, um, you know how it is, uh, and, and maybe you don't, but, but newlyweds, they have their own place and they moved in so quickly that their electricity wasn't on. And so they came over and knocked on the door and people do that all the time. They, I don't know why, but my door is the door that they knock on to ask for help. And they came and they said, well, we don't have our electricity. We wanted to know if we could use your electricity. And I said, no, I have, I have one better. And um, I have this little generator. So I gave them the generator. From that point forward, um, that's kind of been the relationship that, that we've had. And, and it warms my heart to see a young couple and, and, and starting out and, and doing things the right way. And, and so when, when we talk about freedom to love and, and we talk about our, our key text, love thy neighbor as thyself, you, you can see yourself in other people. And if, if you can't see yourself in other people, then even if you have children, you, you would want someone to bless your child as, they, as they're starting out on life and, and, and trying to do things the right way. And so that takes us this morning to our two lesson outlines, love and the law, Romans 13, verse 8 through 10, and then love and spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8 through 13. We're going to get right into it. I don't want us to miss anything this morning. Here at the church, what we do is we read the word of God. We share a little bit about the word of God. Then we read um, um, our Sunday school lesson and we glean from what our Sunday school lesson teaches us about our lesson outlines. And so with that, let's get into the word. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. In the King James Bible, it says, Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Verse 9, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Before we get into reading our Sunday school lesson, this is what I'll say. If you 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 want a better understanding of, of the love that the Lord is referring to this morning. Then that means that love means not committing adultery. Love means not killing. Love means not stealing. Love means not bearing false witness. Love means not coveting. Love means uh, uh, fulfilling the commandments of the law as best we can. Love means obeying God, loving our neighbor as ourselves. The way that the scripture unfolds this lesson for us this morning, we have two commandments. First commandment, go ye therefore unto all the world, baptizing in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. The second is, love the Lord God with all thine heart, all 
thy mind with all thy soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. I don't want us in any shape, form, or fashion think that we have the wherewithal to fulfill the law of love. Why? Because God is love. Why? Because the source of that power of love is in God. And he infuses us with that love so that we fulfill the law of love. This is a very important lesson for us this morning. This helps us to get it right with God, but not only get it right with God, but it helps us to get it right with man and bring honor to God. So let's get into our Sunday school lesson that teaches us about our first lesson outline, law and the love. Our Sunday school lesson says, the Greek verb translated awe is a reflection of the same word in its noun form in Romans chapter 13, 7. There translated dues. This continues the thought of obligation across these two verses. What's different now is that the object of the obligation has changed from being that of what we owe to civic authorities to what we owe to one another. Love and the law. It's a dues that we must pay. It's a duty that we must commit to and fulfill. Not just loving God, but being graced to love others. A Sunday school lesson says, the first part of this half verse uh, that we just read, Romans 13, eight through 10, is certainly in an approval of honoring one's commitment, be they in terms of money, property, etc. Some may question whether Paul is prohibiting the taking out of loans or mortgages, but approval or disapproval of monetary indebtedness is not the main point here. Rather, the phrasing sets up a contrast with the second part of this half verse regarding what should never be considered paid off, the obligation to love. Oh, this, this is such a blessing. Our Sunday school lesson says, love among fellow believers is to be a primary characteristic of Christians. I want to read that again. Love among fellow believers is to be a primary characteristic of Christians. Law and the love. It's so important that we do what we say. And not just say what we do. If you say love thy neighbor, if they knock on the door in the middle of the night saying that they don't have electricity and you provide a way for them to have electricity, if you befriend a family that's at the lowest of their low to make sure you, you, you can't, you can't. Give a hand out, but you can give a hand up. That's love. That's doing what you say. And you're not doing it to get credit or accolades or any of that. It's to bring honor and glory to Christ Jesus alone. This is a rich lesson for us this morning. And my charge, as we go into our second lesson outline, let us here at the church be graced to do what we say. If we say what Christ like, God is love. Let us be the embodiment of agape love, of the love of God, of the love of Christ. This world needs it. There's enough jealousy and envy and hatred and evil and coveting. And we read it this morning and false witnessing. There's enough of that. What about the love of God, the love that saved you, that saved your soul? 
that saved your household. And so we go this morning into our second lesson outline. Now, I'm going to leave it there because it points us to what needs to be done. It points us clearly to what we have to do. And now it's up to us to pray and ask God to help us to do what we say. Second lesson outline, love and spiritual gifts. I want you to read with me. We're turning in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the 13th. Chapter, we're reading the 8th through the 13th verse. Read with me in your Bibles, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 13. In the King James Bible, it says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 9, for we know in part. And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, spake as a child, understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. But the greatest of these is charity. When we started off our Sunday school time this morning, I reminded us of what held Christ Jesus to the cross so that we might be saved. It wasn't the nails in his hands and feet, but it was the love of God. We know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, shall have eternal life. I don't want us to think that that love is far from us. That kind of love doesn't exist uh, uh, because of what we do or because of what we say. Before the foundation of the world, that love has no beginning and it has no ending. That's what we stand on when we stand on Christ Jesus, the rock. That's what we walk in when we walk in Christ Jesus. That, that's what has, has, has been ensued into our being through the power of the Holy Ghost. And so our Sunday school lesson teaches us about that this morning. Why? Because we need to know it. Why? Because we've got to have it. Let's take a look and see what our Sunday school lesson about love and uh, spiritual gifts. Our Sunday school lesson, and we'll close in, in, in prayer in just a second. Our Sunday school lesson for our second lesson outline, it says the Greek word translated charity is exactly the same word translated love in Romans 13.10. Love is to be given priority and practice because it possesses much greater staying power than spiritual giftedness. Love never faileth in the sense of expiring or becoming unnecessary. This is the only place in Paul's letter where he uses the adverb translated here as never, stressing the supremacy of love. By contrast, the time will come when the three gifts mentioned, prophecies, tongues, and knowledge, are no longer in use. Paul has already mentioned those three gifts among others. Perhaps disagreements regarding these three had been creating the greatest amount of tension within the Corinthian church. These gifts were rather public in nature. And thus, those who possessed them tended to draw more attention to themselves. Yet, as impressive as these gifts were, their impact was significantly lessened 
but the person exercising them did not do so out of love. This is what God is teaching us about this morning. We can be flamboyant. We can preach the house down. We can pray uh, uh, people back to life. We can prophesy until the heavens open. But our Sunday school lesson is pointing us, pointing us this morning to what's right. And it is the love of God. All of that stuff, prophecies and the, the knowledge, all of that stuff and the tongues, our Sunday school lesson is teaching us it will pass away, but God's love will remain forever. And so that's how we close out our Sunday school time this morning. As we close, I want to read this prayer. Our Sunday school prayer says this morning, Father, we live in a time where love is perhaps more desperately sought after than ever before. Forgive us when we become callous to the needs around us. Help us to follow the example of Jesus and to see others as he sees them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have a task, we have a charge this morning. And in order to simplify it, it's not about what we say, but it's about what we do. And because we can show kindness, that's a step in the right direction. Because we can smile and hug and encourage, that's a step in the right direction. Let us continue to do what brings glory and honor to God. Let us continue to love our neighbor as ourself. Let us continue to be the ambassadors of the love of Christ Jesus in the world, everywhere that we go. And we honor God for it. He's the one that helps us to be where we need to be. And so as we close out this morning, we were able to cover two lesson outlines, love and the law. We read that in Romans 13, verse 8 through 10. We were able to learn and glean about love and spiritual gifts. We read that in 1 Corinthians 13 through 8. Now we know we have a charge to fulfill. We have a charge to be the hands and feet of Jesus, loving, loving without regret and without remorse. We're talking about the love of Christ Jesus. We're talking about the love that held him to the cross. Thorn on his head, nails in his hands and feet, pierced in his side, 39 lashes on his back. That's the love that we offer to others because Christ offered it to us first. All right, we honor God. We are excited here at the church, we have our youth outreach that's coming up on December 8th. Do ask for your prayers for young people and your families and for this special time that we, we, this outreach that we have scheduled for them. We're praying for our international pastors, praying to be able to bless them as we close out this year. Next Sunday, we have our end of month worship for us here at the church. What that means is that at 8, 8 at 10 a.m., we have our Sunday school time, and directly after that, we go into our end of month worship. And here at the church, we already know the Lord has been ministering to us about Thanksgiving. What a gift that has been and what a gift that is. Every Thursday evening here at the church, we have our midweek Bible study lesson. God continues to get the glory. Here's the thing. In the Bible, Jesus says, I didn't come to bear witness of myself. I came to bear witness of the one that sent me. And here's the thing. We keep our hand in the master's hand. We continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the upward call of God. And guess who bears witness? God is the one who shows the fruit of our labor. Why? Because God alone is the one who deserves all the glory, honor, and praise. And we thank the Lord for that this morning. With that being said, we're closing out here. God bless you. God bless you. May you have and continue to have a supernaturally blessed week. And we'll see you back here Thursday evening for our midweek Bible study. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And we'll see you then.